Hey everybody, welcome to Burr Tech. In this episode, we're gonna be exploring a few quotes from Elon Musk and how you can apply that to your programming. All right, welcome back. Before we start this video, I wanna make sure that you like and subscribe. The more likes and subscribers we get, the more content we can make. Help us get to 10,000 subscribers. So Elon Musk is quoted at saying, the best part is no part, and the best process is no process. So let's dive into what he means by that and let's see how you can use that information to your advantage. Well, one of the things Tesla does and electric cars do compared to a lot of other internal combustion cars is that it's a lot simpler. And if you've ever built a machine for anything, whether it be for school or you actually design machines for your job, you know that simpler machines are better because less things can go wrong. And when you code, you should make the simplest possible program. And the main reason that you have to do this is that if you are building software, specifically complicated software, things can go wrong. And you wanna build the simplest possible logic to your code. So one of the best things about Tesla is because the cars are so simple from a manufacturing point of view, eventually they'll be able to outcompete all of the major automakers because their cars are simple. Again, internal combustion engines are fairly complicated and the cars that are being produced today are fairly complicated. So as a result, Elon Musk and Tesla are gonna be getting a huge manufacturing bonus because everything is so simple. So this process isn't just being applied to Tesla, it's being applied to SpaceX. Now to launch rockets in space, it's fairly complicated and to make the process easier and more simple, it's a lot better. And not only that, it's more cost efficient. So when you make anything, you wanna design it as simply as possible. And the reason that you wanna do this is because it will take time to design a more complex project. And once you release that project, it can break. And if it breaks, you have to spend more in support. And support can be very costly. So one of the things about technology is that everything's getting simple. You can take a look at this image of all of these devices that you would need a separate device for in the 1980s. And today, frankly, your phone can do all of this in a way better capacity. And if you look at iPhones specifically, their design is ultra minimalist. So the future is going to be minimalist. So what that means to a user is that it might be a button to do something and that something just does what it's supposed to do. And this button can be something like getting you from A to B in an autonomous car. Now, of course, the back end of this is gonna be fairly complicated, but even though the user interface is simple, the back end might not be as simple because obviously to push a button and make it work, that's actually really complicated. But whenever you are designing any kind of backend process, you have to make it as simple as possible. Because if a user interface is very simple, then if the backend process doesn't work, then the user is really out of luck. So what are some good tips for making your code much more simple and minimalist? Well, the one thing that you should do is once you write out a program, just simply write it out again and see if you can do it in a simpler and better way. The hardest part about programming is the genesis of the code. And once you have the logic down, you can probably do it again. Now, if you're just learning to code, this is what you wanna do. In fact, if you make a program, then you wanna make a program again and maybe again and again. And if you're following this channel or you followed me through Mammoth Interactive over the years, you'll know that I'll say if you make one project and make another project that's 90% the same, and then another project that's 90% the same after that, you will learn a lot. And this is actually one of the best ways to get better but it actually has some real world applications too. If you take a project and you try to make it simpler, then that is really good. Now, of course, this can be really hard, especially if your program is really big, but maybe you can section off a certain part and see if you can make it simpler. The second one is exactly as it sounds. You basically take a section and you make it simpler. You always try to look and make things simpler. Now, when I start writing code, things end up being complex and I always ask myself, how can I make this simpler? And sometimes I maybe spend an hour on a problem to make it simpler and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. The point is, is that if you try to make something simpler and you Google it, look on Stack Overflow and try to find other solutions, you will improve as well. So this is something that you absolutely want to do. So my last tip for you and probably my most favorite is that if you want to make your code better, then maybe perhaps remove something. And this is what I like to call subtractive production. Most people think that if you want to add a 
to a product, it will make it better. So if you add features and add features and add features, it's gonna be better. This is not always the case. Sometimes the best thing you can do is make it simpler. So if you, let's say, have a calculator and it has 10 fields, maybe make it five and see if it improves. You can always add in a more advanced calculator on a different page if you want. Remember, the future is going to be simpler and more minimalist. And sometimes getting a niche product out there that does something really simple but really well is actually better than the more advanced one. And next time you start a project, you might start with the simpler version first and see where it goes from there, which is the better business view anyway. All right, so that concludes this video. Have you ever had that problem where you had too complex of an app? Well, I wanna know your comments down below. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Let us get to 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. And if you really like this channel, you can buy our digital products down below. The more money we get from the content that you buy below, the more content, especially on this YouTube channel, we can make. If you really like this channel, you can subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We have monthly and yearly options. We release 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month, every month. It is the best deal out there. So please subscribe to Mammoth Interactive and get us to 10,000 paid subscribers. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.